Hello, fellow birders. My name is Dennis Kania. Today we're going to be speaking about some of our grassland sparrows. On the DuPage Birding Club Education Channel, we'll be discussing all things bird related. As I mentioned, we'll be looking at some of our grassland sparrows, and those will be the savanna sparrow, grasshopper sparrow, and henslow sparrow. So here are three graphs that reflect um, the surveys that we've been doing out at Fermilab for all three of these species. And you can see that Savannah Sparrow shows up in the beginning of April um, and is with us through the entire breeding season till uh, mid-November. We do on occasion have these birds show up on <clears throat> Christmas counts. And so you can see that's reflected here and even into January on rare occasions. Grasshopper sparrow and Henslow sparrows come in a little later. They come in about a month later, in fact. Uh, so the end of April into the beginning of May is when we start seeing our grasshopper sparrows showing up. Again, they're with us through the entire breeding season and they depart uh, in early September. So if you look at this grasshopper sparrow graph a little closer, you'll see that there are some gaps in here. So it reflects the fact that we're having more difficulty in locating grasshopper sparrows in the latter part of the season. And overall, we're, we're basically not having as many grasshopper sparrows breeding at Fermilab as we have in the past. There's been some uh, decline in the quality of the grassland areas where they were previously located, and um, there is work underway to, to rectify that. Henslow sparrows, it's kind of interesting. You'll see that in the earlier um, survey periods, you can see there are no records whatsoever. We didn't start seeing Henslow sparrows until that 1997-2001 um, survey period, which is um, indicated by this yellow band. And since that time, we've been finding them re regularly uh, every, every season or every year. So uh, that's reflected in, in this data. And coincidentally, um, Henslow sparrows started to make a increase in their numbers in the northeastern part of Illinois about that time period. So our data certainly reflects that, that increase in uh, Henslow sparrows moving into that part of the state. So here are three species that we're going to be talking about. And you can see there are some definite similarities here. And this is partly why um, birders can get so frustrated with our sparrows. You can see that they're all very streaky on the back. All three of them are. Um, head patterns are somewhat similar. You have a dark crown in all three cases with a lighter median crown stripe running through them. Uh, there's a little bit of variability in the facial patterns. However, you still have some similarities in the supercilium here. You can see in the super laurel, we have some yellow on the savanna sparrow. Uh, in the super laurel of a grasshopper sparrow, you can see it's a little bit more of an ochre yellow color, and sometimes that's absent, so uh, you may or may not actually see that. The supercilium on the Henslow sparrow is kind of an olivey color, but still, regardless of that coloration, you're still going to have a very similar pattern there. Uh, two of these species do have a fair amount of streaking on the front. In the case of savanna sparrow, you see there's a lot of streaking. It goes all the way down through the flank. Uh, a little less streaking on the Henslow sparrow, and then at least on adult grasshopper sparrows, you would not expect to see any streaking at all. So let's take a closer look at savanna sparrow. As I mentioned, uh, at the crown, you can see it's a dark crown. Uh, this crown might show a little more fine streaking than the other two species, but overall it still looks like a dark crown with a very white median crown stripe running through it. And out of the three species, this is probably the strongest um, of the median crown stripes. If you take a look at the bill, you can see this bird has a small bill compared to the other two species, which we'll, we'll see shortly. You can see again the supercilium, which I mentioned is a pretty solid supercilium and in the super laurel or that front part of the supercilium you can see that there's kind of a yellowish wash here. It's very strong in this individual and this is kind of intermediate in between those two examples. So there's a lot of variability in that and if you get to see a savanna sparrow that has nice bright yellow here then it's kind of a easy identification that, that really helps out quite a bit. Notice also that the head is very round and, and you can see that in all three of these examples. When we get to the other two species, you'll see that they look much more flat-headed, so there's a difference in that regard. This bird has a strong mustachial stripe and mallard stripe, and you can see that in all three of these examples. And that's, that will be a key feature for us to, to make note of as well. 
All that streaking that I mentioned earlier, you can see it's very well-defined streaks. It's on a very clean looking white background. So it makes the uh, streaking look even brighter because of that. But these are elongated streaks compared to what we're going to see on Henslow's sparrow. So here's our grasshopper sparrow. Right away you can see just how much larger looking that bill is than what we were just looking at on Savannah Sparrow. Again, a dark crown with a um, white median crown stripe running through it. And you can see that in all three of these indiv individuals. Definitely you can see it right here. In all three of these cases, we do see a bit of a yellow ochre spot here, and that is not always easy to see or necessarily even existing um, on some of the birds that we'll see in the field. So I wouldn't count on seeing that. But overall, it does look like a very plain face. You will have maybe one little small mark behind the, on the backside of the ear coverts, which you see here. Uh, you will see a pretty strong eye ring generally. It's not showing up really well here in this picture, but if you look closely, you can kind of make out that there's an eye ring there. You can see that that face color blends down all the way into the throat and all the way down into the breast. It's a pale buffy and you get that whole, this whole part of the bird is all in that color. and No streaking in the adult birds. Uh, that may get paler as you get down to the lower parts in the belly and the lower flank here. You can see that kind of in that individual as well. So uh, it's not uniform all the way down, but it is very, very pale. You might notice here, uh, this is another feature that you can look for that would separate it from the other two species, but you'd have to look carefully. The tertials, which are these three feathers all lined up here on the inner part of the wing, are all edged in white, and the other two species would not reflect that. So plain face, no mustachial or mallard stripe, plain throat, plain breast, uh, very drab looking bird overall. So here's our Henslow sparrow, again a very large bill. Uh, that flat headed look again, a dark crown, and in this case, instead of it being a very white median crown stripe, it's more of a grayish uh, median crown stripe. So it won't necessarily um, stick you in the eye like the other two might. Uh, the uh, face overall is kind of an olivey drab color, and that too can even be very hard to see on occasion in the field. Uh, if you look at this individual here, it looks kind of washed out. So um, you have to look carefully in order to see that. Um, the facial pattern is similar to the grasshopper sparrow, not a whole lot going on. However, you do have, aside from the, um, the one mark at the back of the ear coverts, you do have more of an outline going around the ear coverts. And you do have a mustachial stripe and you do have a mallard stripe, and that's very clear in this example here. And a key thing to look for between those two stripes is in the submustachial area, you look to see if that is buffy. That should be buffy. You should also see some buff going across the upper breast where the streaks are. And you can see how these streaks are much finer looking than what we were seeing on our Savannah Sparrow. The length of the streaks is very short. Uh, they don't necessarily go down the breasts uh, as far as we were seeing on the Savannah Sparrow. They will kind of leak down here along the flanks uh, where they become more diffused. But um, again, streaking more to the upper breast and finer looking. So those are all characteristics that would help you very much to identify this as a Henslow sparrow. So I wanted to bring up the fact that as long as you're out there in those grasslands looking for um, some of these grassland sparrows, you could also run into female bobolinks. And at a glance, this bird would look very much like a grasshopper sparrow. You see the dark crown, you see a heavy bill, you see a white median crown stripe. The face is very plain except for some marking behind the eye. So all of that would, could potentially lead you towards um, grasshopper sparrow. And the things that you'd want to look at to differentiate this one from the grasshopper sparrow would be the fact that the bill, and it is large, but it's very pointed. We're in a different family now. And so this is actually a blackbird type bill, very pointy compared to what we saw on that grasshopper sparrow. The nape area here is very plain gray, whereas on grasshopper sparrow, you would have more streaking. And the wing is quite long, much longer than any of those three sparrows we just talked about. And you can see the, uh, the wing does extend all the way down, well down is, uh, into where the undertail coverts are. So uh, that's a pretty good distance. Most of our, uh, our sparrows that we were talking about, their tails were gonna, or wings would be ending somewhere in this area up in here. So quite a bit longer looking uh, wing. So in the simplest terms, uh, the features that uh, would separate Savannah Sparrow from the other two species would include that rounded head, a small bill, more extensive streaking on a fairly clean white 
um, breast and belly. Uh, the yellow super laurel is a welcome possibility. Uh, the stronger it is, the easier it makes it for you to make your identification, but you can't count on it always being very bright and bold. Features that would separate grasshopper sparrow from Henslow sparrow would include a rather plain buff face, um, a lack of a mustachial or malar stripe, a stronger white or median crown stripe, and no streaking on the breast in adult plumages. And again, if you can look closely, you could pick up the fact that there are white edges on those tertials. Features that would separate Henslow sparrow from the other two species would include an olive wash on that face, a combination of the presence of both mustachial and malar stripe, along with buff in the submustachial area, and the streaking is on a buff washed breast and lower flank. And don't forget to watch out for those bobolinks. So thanks for taking the time to view this video. Hopefully you, we've given you some bird food, bird food for thought. And I hope you'll join us again in the future as we explore all things bird related.